I'd like to welcome everybody here to the House of Jacob Bible study class here in Chicago. It's good to be here. Yep, we made it a whole week. Anybody have problems? We did. Yeah, but um, uh, my name is Abraham. I'll be your teacher today, Brian. Reader, good reader. Um, it would be inappropriate if I didn't welcome the Lord of hosts among us. Because the Lord said, when two or more is gathered in his name, there he's in the midst, right? So, we do have angels among us. Believe it. Believe it. So, today's title of the lesson is, Who Wrote the Bible? You know, so for the most part, I always say, Holy Bible. Because Bible means books or book. But there's a difference between this book and all other books that's printed. If you pick it up, you don't see no author on it. It's no author, right? So this lesson just came about. We've been dealing with it for years, but this sister, this brother that was working with me, he, uh, his wife Kept telling him, you know, the white man wrote the Bible. I'm going to put it just like she said it. The right white man wrote the Bible. And, uh, you know, regardless of what race wrote the Bible, you know, uh, she said that uh, it was to keep the black man out. I'm just telling you the exact words she told me, right? So that was cool. Bring it on, right? So tell me more. So she told me more. And so uh, she uh, invited me over to her, her husband and her children's house to deal with that. So me and my other brother, we grabbed a, our book. We saddled up like we always do and we headed out. So when we got there, I pulled out my bag that I got a whole lot of stuff in with the gospel, and I just pulled it out. I said, all of this, all of this, this is 35 years of gospel. And you know what? It's a, it's a good question. Who wrote the Bible, right? Who wrote the Bible? But more importantly, who can interpret it? Or who can reveal the things that's written in it, right? And that's a good question. And this lesson can go on forever. It can. But books and revelations and what did God want us to do? So I told her, let's do, deal with it like this. So we open up the book. So let's go into the book of Genesis. This is just how I'm telling you this lesson. I'm giving you this lesson. Just how I gave it to her. Me and another brother named uh, Ray Uben or Reuben. We've been doing this for years. We've been preaching this gospel for years. This is like second nature. So she says, do, well, uh, Abraham, before you get started, do you believe in the Bible? I said, I'm past belief. Belief is for the unbeliever. I'm past belief. This thing is to the death for me. This is to the death. Everybody in this room that's going to join himself with us is, are not going to make it out alive. So when you pick this book up and some of the things you get from it and you go on your way through life and you start reading this book, reading this book, reading this book, a lot of things are going to hit you. You're going to get the baptism. You're not going to be straight. You're not going to be on that road you're going to be on that road, but you're not going to be on that road to where everything is going to be perfect as it goes along, as it goes along, as it goes along. It's, it's not. 
But more importantly, in this book is a lot of things. So the sister said, you know, and we're going to start. Sister said, you know, Abraham, uh, every time I try to read the Bible that, you know, I, I, I need other books to help me understand the Bible. I said, well, how many books you have? She said, I got like 13 books. I said, how, how is it that God have a book? And he has a book. And, but you need words from men to interpret God's word. That's impossible. Saying that he gave you the book where all other books are standardized by. So she said she had 13 books. So I took the book. I told you I moved. And I told her, I said, here, hold this. I, that's how I did. I'm telling you the story. I said, hold this. And she, I said, how many books can you hold? She said, well, I can only get around with about 13. I said, you got 66 right there. I said, you stronger. I said, you stronger than you think. You stronger than you think. You know, so she holding all these books. I said, just hold it, and just hold it, and just hold it. Because when we get through with this lesson, you're going to embrace it. And by the time we got through, I tell Anna the story, her feet was up on the couch. She had, she was going through the book like crazy. So we're going to start. And, I'm, and, I, and I said, well, let me show you something. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to show, and I asked her, I said, well, have you ever investigated or went into the book and read? She said, yeah, I tried everything. I said, well, the, the, uh, the title of the lesson, I got to I gotta write this. So people that come in, right? Okay, here come that word. Is it right? Yes. Yeah, That's right. Mm -hmm. Who can interpret it? All right, so so I told her, let's see how, how short the lesson is. So we started in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. All right, go ahead. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's it. That's it. The lesson is over with. The lesson is over with. If you think that man wrote the Bible, this says in the beginning God created the heavens and earth. The lesson is over with. Right? Wasn't no man around. There wasn't a man around. The lesson is over with. So I told her, go, let's go to Revelations. This I want, I want, I, we got to go to Revelations. I got to show you this too. Because sometimes I do this in my lessons. But we can get here quick. Let's go to Revelations 12. Real quick. Revelations 12 and 7. And I showed her this. Because I know. And it's so important to read. We got to read. We, we got to read. We got to read. The, 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 the Psalms we had today. That Brother Brian read. I mean, that was smoking. Sweet. Gospel, right? Then we get the choir. Smoking. Gospel. All gospel. Now we get this. We getting ready to get fed. You know, this is the Sabbath day. Everybody should relax. Rest up. Hey. If you sleep. I tell people wherever I go. If you if you're sleeping and you just got off of work and you came here. Rest. Just don't snow too loud. Rest up. You know? This is the Sabbath day. This is this day represent what we're gonna all get a chance, hopefully, to enjoy down the future. With our God, with our King. Yeah. See, and when you listen to people and tell them that this book is not necessary, or some parts of this book is not necessary, like the old testament is it's not necessary, you throw out everything. You throw out your God, you throw out your king, 
You throw out the babies. You throw out everything. You throw out love. All the issues of man is in this book. All the issues. All issues. All issues that pertain to man, woman, children are in this book. Every issue. You bring it up. Drug abuse, in it. Homosexuality, in it. Beating your wives, in it. Misusing each other, in it. Talking bad to each other, in it. Confusion, in it. So when you look at this book, and I done read this book over and over again, but I got to keep reading it so it can bring back things to my remembrance that I read Years and years and years ago. And I got to keep reading it. And I got to keep reading it. And I tell everybody, I'm a lawyer in this. I'm a lawyer in this. I am a lawyer in this. I invite people. Hey, give it to me. You want to know something? Hey, and then I get in there and I say, okay, let's deal with that issue. See? Because in order for us to be judges down the line in God's kingdom, you got to be a lawyer first. You got to be a lawyer in this thing. You got to know the law. You got to know it. You got to know it. You got to know it. So here it is. Revelations 12 and 7. This is what I showed her again. 12 and 7. Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Uh huh. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Mm -hmm. And prevailed not. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Wow. Lesson is over with again. The lesson is over with again. Was no man here? This was before the earth was populated with any human. This was war in heaven. I asked the sister, I, hey, look, did you know this was in it? She said, no. I said, okay, let's finish the lesson. So let's go to Genesis chapter forty. Uh, let's go to Second Peter. My fault. Second Peter. So we got two spots right there that if man wrote the Bible, then whoever told you that it would be over with. But let's, we're going to go into the book and we're going to read some scriptures and we're going to find out who really God is along the way of finding out that nobody can in a wildest dreams write this. In their wildest dreams, write this. Everybody got books out here. Everybody got books. Everybody got books. Everybody got books, right? Mm -hmm. See? You don't think God would have a book? You got to at least give him credit for that. Everybody have books, but God don't have one. Well, yeah, he got one. I'm telling you. He got one. There's no contradictions in it. If it seems like it is. It's because you haven't read it all. And I can do this all day long. How many people have read the Bible? Sisters probably won't do like this. But brothers' hands will be creeping up. <laughs> lying, lying that they didn't read it. I'm talking about all the book. No, no. You ain't read this book. One of my brothers that was with me, he asked him, he said, hey, man, uh, you know where the book of Genesis? Let's go to the book of Genesis. So he, he turned the book open like this. He just going. And me and the brother, we just looking at him. He all back here. He said, man, Genesis is the first book. He said, oh, man, I was just playing, man. I, I didn't know what Genesis was. And that's a lot with people. They don't know what's in this book. By the time you start reading this, and you take your time, just take your time. It's fascinating. Matter of fact, it's out of this world, if you know what I mean. It's out of this world. This, this word came from heaven. And everything that God created then came down to earth. Did you know that? His word then came down to earth. His angels then came down to earth. Everything. Heaven is on earth. This is a heaven. It's a bad one at this time. Right? But there's a lot of things. So let's go to Genesis chapter 40. And let's see Second what's happening. Peter. What is it? Second Genesis? Peter. Huh? Second Peter. Yeah, let's go to Second Peter first. Second Peter. I love this class. I love classes. You know, you can fail classes. Fail. You can get some bad grades in class. 
but this happened to be a class that you got an open book. You shouldn't fail. This is an open book test. Open book test. Open book test. Really. First Peter. Second. Me, second. Did I say second? Second Peter one. Second Peter one. And let's pick it up at. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. In seventeen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Second Peter one and seventeen. All right, go ahead. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. And this voice which came from heaven he heard, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Yeah. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Where until you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Mm -hmm. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So I asked her, I said, what do that mean to you? And I asked her, was that plain? She said, yeah. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures, no private interpretation. This book that we have, no man can come up here and get us to you and say, here man, this is what I wrote. Now listen, I can interpret it to you. So we have a more sure word of prophecy. You have to go back in, from the law all the way to Malachi, from Genesis to Malachi, and read this book and find out the words of prophecy that is of no private interpretation. He said, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. That throws man out for writing a book. Right. It didn't. It didn't. And we're going to read some of these other writings in here where you see that these words never came from man. Never came from man. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2. Let's deal with a, an example. Daniel. Now, Genesis 40. Then we're going to go to uh, Daniel chapter 2. Let's go to Genesis 40. Same example. One of the same examples, but this is doing um, doing Jacob's children, Joseph in his day, when a situation happened. And this part of the lesson, as we flow on through, is going to show who can interpret things, you know. Uh, everything we ask of God, we, we must ask him, you know. Or find somebody who know, you know, and ask them, have you heard? You know. Genesis 40. And let's pick it up at verse 5. And this is a situation where a dream is dreamed. And what are dreams? What are dreams? Are they natural? Are they spirits? Huh? This is a Bible class. You can participate. That's how I do my Bible classes. Huh? They spirits. Right. They spirits. Right? You laying down in your bed and you dreaming the dreams you dreaming and they foggy, right? You running from somebody but you can't run fast enough. Right? You're falling and somebody told you if you hit the ground you're going to die if you don't wake up. They spirits, right? But dreams can mean things. Dreams can. Right? So here's the situation. With a dream. Go ahead. Verse 5. Yeah. And they dreamed a dream, both of them. Mm -hmm. Each man his dream in one night. Mm -hmm. Each man according to the interpretation of his dream. Now this was a baker and a butler. A baker and a butler. They both had dreams. Eventually they, they thought their neck was both on a chopping block. And they were. Right? And they, but they had these dreams. And they didn't know what the dream meant. But to save time, we're not going to read the dream, but the dream came to pass. But let's see what uh, the Lord had Moses to write right here. Go ahead. The butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. Uh -huh. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? Uh -huh. And they said unto him, 
We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. <laughs> and Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. Now, so, yeah, interpretations belong to God, right? So if this book is God's book, where are you going to go get the interpretation from? You got to go to God. But this guy just dreamed something merely but a dream, a dream. He said, hey, look, because it's a dream, nobody don't see it. Only you, laying there with the dream, can try to figure out what it means. But you can't go to the Most High mm -hmm. and say, Lord, what do this mean? And that's what Joseph did. Joseph didn't concoct nothing in his own mind. He went to God and he told him, hey, look, one of these guys is going to die. And this is what the dream meant. So that's what happened. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2. Same situation. Daniel chapter 2. It's so good to deal with a lesson where you got an uh, excellent reader. I have to say that. I have to say that. Yep. You can flow. Right? You got good readers. Daniel chapter 2. And this is the same situation. You know. And my lessons, I put, I put them together just in case you're out there dealing with people. And you can refer back to them. You know. Because that's how you, this, this is a broad book. And people are going to always come and talk to you. They, they, they need to know about God. You know. They need to know how you feel about the God you serve. We serve a great God. Uh, Daniel chapter 2. Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Mm -hmm. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. Uh -huh. So they came and stood before the king. Uh -huh. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. Uh huh. So they said, hey, look, you dreamed a dream. Tell us the dream, and we'll tell you the interpretation. Right? Go ahead. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you should be cut in pieces, and your houses should be made a dung heap. Now, how the heck can I do that? The dream been gone from me that I dream, but you want me, being who I am, a Chaldean or astrologer, you want me to tell you your dream? That's crazy. Then you want me to tell you what the dream meant. You want me to tell you the whole dream and what it meant? Okay, let's see what happened. Go ahead. Verse 6. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, mm -hmm. you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Mm -hmm. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. Mm -hmm. They answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will show the interpretation. Listen, of we it. didn't win over this already. You talking to me. I pay you to be my astrologer, my magicians, my soothsayers. Tell me the dream, man. I didn't already told you the dream is gone from me. Go ahead. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you would have gained the time because ye see the thing is gone from me. Mm -hmm. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Mm -hmm. Therefore, tell me the dream and I should know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. Y yeah, he said, well, if you tell me the dream, then I know you can determine the interpretation. Well, they got to get to the dream first. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 10. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king. What did he matter. say? It's not a man on earth that can show the king a dream that he didn't dream himself. Go ahead. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things that any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. Go ahead. And it is a rare thing that the king requires. It's a rare thing that the king, it's a rare thing that anybody requires. You, you come up to me, you say, man, you know what, I dreamed a dream. Can you tell me the dream? Oh, okay, well, the only thing to say is tell me the dream. 
Well, go ahead. And there is none other that can show it before the king uh -huh. except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Now, the only body can show you a dream is a god, but their dwellings are not with flesh. So you got to go somewhere else to get the, the dream. And this is how it is with all things, with men. See, you got to go somewhere else to get it, the answer to that. Skip down to verse 25. Go ahead. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste and now, said thus unto him. Uh, now see, Daniel was a wise man just like all these ones he was getting ready to kill. But Daniel was among the people that he was going to kill too. Because Daniel was a wise man. So this is what this guy did. The king sent in his people to go get even Daniel. Go ahead. I have found a man of the captives of Judah mm -hmm. that will make known unto the king the interpretation. Mm -hmm. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Mm -hmm. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king. Uh -huh. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets. Yeah, because Amen. all these things we did within this book are secrets. They secrets. They secrets. Yeah, you can read, you can pick up something and read uh, some plain. But it's a lot of secrets in this book. That's why people come and they, I can, I can go from here to Alaska and back with my book, with the clothes on my back, and come back a rich man. I never have to take none with me. They're going to give me money along the way. They're going to feed me along the way. I'm going to come back 30 pounds heavier. <laughs> I'm going I'm to have to leave clothes wherever I go. You know what this book is? This is better than gold. This is better than gold. I'm telling you, this is what I know. We're going to die for this. Some of us are going to die for this. There's going to be some people in this class that's going to come up and do the sign that Judas did and kiss his brother and say, there he is. <laughs> there he is. You want to know the ones who serve in the Lord, the true and living God? There he is. Everybody in here don't love the Lord. I already know that. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. You see signs and forms of it around all the feast days, during the week. See? I'm telling you. All my lessons I deal with is social issues. Almost all of them. With social issues. How are you going to treat him? How am going to treat her? That's, all, that's basically how all my lessons are. Because that's what it came down to. Right. You know, how we treat each other. Right. That's what it comes down to. Right. You know. All them other things. History and all that. We need to know. But how I treat you. Right. That's what's happening. Where we at? Top of 28. Go ahead. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets yep. and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Mm -hmm. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Now, we're not going to read it, but you can read it on your own time what the dream was. And then you went to the Lord and asked him about the dream and interpretation. And the dream concerned the latter days of Nebuchadnezzar and what happened with him. And this guy winded up walking around naked. For seven years eating grass like an ox. Mm -hmm. Nails grow that long and, you know, he abased them. See, skip down to verse 44. Go ahead. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. This is part of that dream. Go ahead. Which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now imagine you dreaming a dream, and you couldn't understand this. But that's why the dream was so heavy on Nebuchadnezzar that he woke up, and it broke from him, and this guy was sweating and everything. You know, because this thing concerned things down all the way to the Lord's kingdom. Go ahead. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, mm -hmm. and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, mm -hmm. The great God hath made known to the king what should come to pass hereafter. Mm -hmm. And the dream is certain in the interpretation thereof. Yeah, sure. because when you deal with this book, the interpretations are sure. They sure. All these words are sure. If God tell you something, it's sure. 
You know, we just waiting. We are players out here. We just players out here. We waiting as the, for the time to go past and bump into prophecy. That's what we're doing. we bumping into prophecy as the days go on, right? So it's, no, it's not 24 hours in a day no more, right? We think it is. Yeah, it is. It is. But Lord, he do his son just like this. And the days just be going, be going, be going, be going. Because the Lord is hastening his coming. See? Yeah, 24 hours going to pass. It's going to seem like 24 hours. But come on, man. You know, these days are short. Short, 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 short. I was just 17. <laughs> I'm 57 now. Right? And that was just yesterday. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? You remember just what you ate yesterday when you was a child. That's how quick it's going. That, it, that is. Go ahead. What? 46. Go ahead. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of God. Yes, yeah, and that's how, you know what, that's what we stand on at the end of the, of the day when you're dealing with all these people out there. Imagine, look at this. We on the west side. We on the west side of Chicago, right? This is how I live my life. This is how I go through every day in my life. I'm talking about me personally, Abraham. We here on, on the west side and out of all the people on the west side, not the ones who might be at work or just couldn't make it today for a good reason. We are the only people that's here. Hmm. Imagine how great that is. Do you know how great that is? We are the only people here. Mm -hmm. out of, how many people on the west side? Right. I asked him because he on the west side. See, out of all the people, we the only ones here. Few. Man, you better start counting your blessings. You got to. This is how you live your life. People want to know how do you live the gospel. You just go through it like this. And you be troubled almost every day, but you don't let it bother you so much where your hair turn gray right before people's eyes. But, you know, it's a lot of things to consider in these days. It is. It's a lot of things. So you live your life. with the, Our God is God. He, our God is the God of gods. And when you understand that, man, everything seems to be a burden, but it's a burden that you can deal with. Go ahead. And a Lord of kings. <clears throat> He's a Lord of what? Kings. Go ahead. And a revealer of secrets. He's a revealer of secrets. Who can interpret this book? Who can interpret this book? Right? You're a revealer of secrets, man. You want to know, man, don't ask me. I'm just going to tell you what the Lord say. Right? Go ahead. Seeing thou couldn't reveal the secret. And, and I'm, I think that's good. Let's mm -hmm. go to Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy. And, and, you know, when I was dealing with the book with this sister, she never took time out to even open a book up. I said, guess what? I said, you, ain't, you haven't taken no trips. She said, yeah, I took trips. I said, you stay in hotels? She said, yeah. I said, and you didn't go in the drawer? The Bible is in the drawer. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Number one seller. Why? Because man didn't write it. Of all time I'm talking about. Of all time. Number one seller. Right? Somebody always want to talk against it. Always want to. Do you know who you're talking against? The deck is stacked against this earth. The deck is stacked. Not only do you have you, you think you're talking about Jesus or excommunicating him, you're trying to throw out the father that you have no idea who you're dealing, really dealing with. Right, right. He sent him. He sent Jesus. Do you know what type of situation we're in? Do, are you realizing this? Are you, 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 you walking but you dead. You talking, but you listen, the righteous going to scarcely be saved. Mm -hmm. We barely hanging on the string, barely hanging on the string. I'm telling you. And when you look at it like that and you live like that, see, you'll walk easy. Yeah. And you'll talk to people different, different. And you won't be coming up and concocting something and being false witnesses against something that you wasn't there. You cannot be a false witness. And then, out of all his book, all his word, he told you don't add to it. Hmm. But don't take away. 
Right? Don't add to, don't take away. Every time I get ready to go out and preach the gospel, when I'm praying, Lord, I'm de- deliver up your lesson. Like um, Martin came over here and said, hey, Abraham, hey, feed the people. It's what I do. I feed the people. Right? And I always think and tell the Lord, I never add to your word. I never take away from it too. See? It's just as bad. Adding to it or taking away is just as bad. Right. You didn't tell the truth. Right? You didn't tell the truth. So here it is. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. 25. 29. Did I, did I 29 go? and 25. No, 29. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess we can. Let me see what I had up there. No, let's just deal with 29 and 29. I probably was writing fast. 29 and 29, <laughs> but thanks. All right, go ahead. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. See, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. All the secret things. All the secret things, right? Go ahead. But those things which are revealed belong unto us. But the things that are revealed from the Lord, the secret thing, they belong to us now. Because guess what he gave them to us? Go ahead. And to our children forever. And to our children forever. And I was going to cut this lesson on the end of it, but I couldn't because it is. So we'll see it. And it belongs to our children. You got to pass it on. Amen. You got to pass it on to the babies. Listen, imagine this. This is like... We are in a generation right now where when we hear the gospel now and we give it to our children, this is the first time in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years where babies are being born in the word. Do you know that? You need to start thinking. Babies didn't used to come up in the gospel. They came up in the Baptist church and the Methodist. and all. Come on now. They are actually coming up in all these children that's being born now to us. They are coming up in the gospel. Mm-hmm. Whoever heard such a thing. Why? Because the Lord is setting things in order. He's setting things in order. He's setting, and nobody is kind of looking. We looking. We know. Right? We know. So, let's go to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Show you something here. And that, that, uh, that, uh, second Psalms that they were singing about Jesus being the king and king of everything. We're going to read that. We're going to read that. See? I asked the sister, I said, so far do you think we dealing with your answer, your question. She said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, stop me when I'm not. Right? Proverbs 3, pick it up at verse 32, 3 and 32. Go ahead. For the forward is abomination to the Lord. Yep, the forward is an abomination to the Lord, but... But his secret is with the righteous. But his secret is with the righteous. Imagine that. You know? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, his secrets belong to the righteous. Right? That's good enough. Let's go to Revelations 1 and 1. This, I want to show you this because this is the, this is the route or route that the word travels. So, I had to show her this. This is how it travels. You know, no prophecy of this scripture of no private interpretation. Man didn't sit down and write this. And no point of this book you can turn to and say that the Lord, a, a man wrote it. We're not talking about a man who copied down the things that the Lord say right. When he say write it, don't you know men wrote it? And they wrote it exactly right. Don't change my word. Right? There's a lot of men dead in the earth. Dead. They were sitting up trying to write this book and change it. And they came back in a room and they <laughs> just out of it. I'm telling you that. You don't think so? Yeah, they are. Yeah, there's a lot of people dead trying to change this. Yeah, and they got copies out here, the new translation and all this. Man, they have no idea what they're doing. You know? But it's out now. This is out. 
And when you take this away, you can take this away. And God got his word. How he got his word? Through his people. Mm -hmm. He might know more Genesis. He might know more Deuteronomy. You might know more of Philmon. You might know more of Habakkuk. She might know more of Genesis. And the collectively, collectively, we are what? A body. Now you understand why God say we the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because whether you take this book away, no matter when you put this congregation together, boom. There it is. There it is. You can't get rid of it. You cannot get rid of it. We are saints of the most high God. Right? We are. Right. You, we got to act like that. We truly got to act like we are the saints of the most high God. We can tell people what's going to be. And how it's going to be. You know? See? When I finished this lesson last week in Milwaukee, the brother wanted to talk about more things. Hey, we can't talk about everything. I want to. You know? Revelations 1 and 1. This is the route how the word came. And this is what she kind of thought she meant when she said that a man wrote this book. No, this is the route how it comes. Go ahead. The Revelation, revelation, one one. The revelation of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Uh -huh. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now that's the route. That's the route that the word came. All the words that's written in the book came this way. From the father to the son to the angel to man. Mm -hmm. And man, when every last one of them wrote it, they wrote it correctly. And you know how you go around the room when was little and you say, hey man, say this. And then by the time you get around to the room, it's changed. And somebody didn't get killed and I didn't say none of that. I just say, man, let's go chill. I said, let's go chill. But by the time it got around to the room, somebody was, he said, man, I thought he said, kill him. <laughs> no. See, when the father gave it to Jesus, Jesus said exactly what the father said. Right. And the angel said exactly what Jesus said, yeah. and the man that received the word from the angel said exactly to us what we read now. That's right. No private interpretation. That's right. No private interpretation. His word is out of this world. But it didn't came to the earth. Right? Here we go again. Let's go to Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. And let's pick it up at verse 9. Isaiah 29 and 9. <clears throat> this is a problem. You know, once you, you know, the sister, she was, she well pleased for keep reading and dealing with this book now. So I had to show her some more things that's connected to it. And all the things she's trying to put out. And throw away when men throw away things. Talking about this, this, this is a book that's not good for read. It's so good for read. Mm -hmm. It is so good. 9, verse 29 and 9, Isaiah, go ahead. Stay yourselves and wonder. Now, he said, stay yourselves and wonder, go ahead. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. Uh -huh. They stagger, but not with strong drink. And that's what's, what's wrong with this sister, right? She had drunk some stuff that somebody told her, and she, it went down, and it just stayed in her mind that, hey, this is how it is. This book was written by man. But go ahead. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. Yeah, so all the prophets, all the preachers, all the teachers, eyes are covered. Mine are covered. Theirs covered. But go ahead. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Yeah. How is it sealed to, to, to people? How? Because you're out there doing something crazy. You have no business doing. And you're thinking about God the way you think God is. See, go ahead. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, uh -huh. and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. See, that's what I told us. I say, see, God's fear is taught to you by men who don't fear him. Hmm. And they telling you something other than what he didn't say. They, they added to it or either they taking some out. 
So now you, Jesus or God is watered down to nothing. Mm -hmm. See? But go ahead. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work. This is the Lord talking. He's going to do a marvelous work. Go ahead. Among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. Yeah, right out of their mind, the Lord's going to have them walking around acting like they're crazy. And they're going to be talking all kind of craziness. All kind of crazy stuff. Oh, Babylon. Babylon, yeah. They are. Go ahead. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Mm -hmm. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Uh -huh. And their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us? See? They even get bold like that. God don't see us. Man, just keep on. Let's do it. Put your hand to it, man. Go ahead. And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down should be esteemed as a potter's uh -huh. plate. And it's going to come a day, man, that these preachers are going to be on the move. <laughs> They're going to be running, running, and running. And they, they're only going to be running from their congregation. The same people they set up there and deceived, they're going to be running from them. And when somebody catch them, like the book say, they're going to, hey man, I didn't do that. Look, I'm a shepherd. The wounds in my hands is from, mm-mm, man. No, nah, I gave you my money all my life. I know it ain't no good <laughs> right now. I know money ain't no good, but you got to go. And they... Flock is going to tie them up. Mm -hmm. They're going to tie them up. See? And the Lord will not count it as murder. He's not going to even count it as murder. Because for robbery is what? Death. Not unless you pay it back seven times. Like the book say. But go ahead. Middle of 16. Go ahead. For shall the work say to him, say of him that made it, he made me not. Mm -hmm. Or shall the thing framed say to him that framed it, he had no understanding. That's what you're saying to God. That's what you're saying to God. He said, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as a part of clay. Shall the work say unto him that made it, I, he made us. How are you going to tell God what? Who can counsel him? Who has counseled the most high? <laughs> Who sit him down and say, well, other than the father. Right? But that's what men say. That's what men say. Or shake to the thing the frame say of him. The frame. Imagine you didn't create a pot. A beautiful pot. And, you're, and the pot opened his mouth to you. Man, get me off this stove. <laughs> that's what we say to the Lord. When he say, I say it. But you turn around and say, I said it when I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. See? Imagine your creature. The creature you created, telling you talking to the creator. That don't make sense. Not at all. That don't make sense. And people are do actually doing this. We're not just reading stories. I hope you all not thinking that. This is really what's happening in the earth. Are we finished? Verse seventeen. Go ahead. Is it not yet a little while, and Lebanon should be turned into a fruitful field, mm -hmm. and the fruitful field should be esteemed as a forest? Go ahead. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. See, the deaf going to hear the words of the book. We talking about a book. We talking about a book. I didn't ease the word book into this lesson, into these writings. But we're going to continue with that thing, with the book. Go ahead. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. That's good enough. Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Talk about the things in this book, man. 1 Peter chapter 1. They don't know what's in this. They don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's happening, man. You know, everybody to come here, keep coming. Keep coming. God is passing out invitations. Amen. God is passing out invitations. Understand? Everybody is invited. Right? To the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's right. Everybody is invited. Come on. Everybody not going to be there to come. At the end, you know, I look at them doors, you know, them doors right there, back there. And if it was a, 
if it was a set time where the doors had to be closed, how many people would be left out? If that was your salvation on the line, mm-hmm. how, how soon how, this place be packed? One fifteen. Soon as the choir get through, boom, it's closed. That's how our life is up against it. You know, one day, just one day. Every day we supposed to worship God, but one day out of the week, people say, Abraham, I haven't seen you in in weeks and weeks. It ain't because I didn't want to be here. I'll be somewhere else dealing with the gospel. You know? Yeah. So here we go. Some deep things in here. Uh, Peter, First Peter chapter 1. Pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. See, I, and I came here for the sister to let her know that once she understood that the book is not interpretation of man, her salvation is was put out there before she even knew it. Now, as we're going through this lesson, we're dealing with salvation and her salvation and things that God said. So now, just in case she want to pick this up and continue going, I had to let her know about her faith, that the trial of her faith being, more, being much more precious than that of gold. Go ahead. Whom having not seen, ye love. Mm. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Wait a minute. We believe in a God that we don't even see. Hmm. Right? Listen, back in the days of uh, Adam, you know, Methuselah and all of those people, they didn't even know who God's name was. He had to tell them. They just called him God. Then down the line he said, I'm the God of Abraham. Then I am that I am. Then I'm Jehovah. Then I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Right? They didn't even know who he was. And then after that time, then the people walked with the actual God from Genesis to Malachi, Jesus himself. Imagine that. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Now, Jesus is gone. Nobody don't get a chance to walk with him. But how do you walk with him? Through his word. And we are much more believers than they were because this is the end of everything. This is the end of everything. Mm-hmm. you got to believe. It's, the sister asked me, she said, well, is it another testament? It's only two. You got the New Testament, you got the Old Testament. You got the Old, you got the New. God ain't talked about nothing else. After this, it's the Father's kingdom. And he even talked about that. But there's no more testimonies. Mm-hmm. There's no more testimonies. There's no more. There's no more. It is over. We just wait until the time comes to fulfill this. Right. Go ahead. Verse 9. Receive the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Uh-huh. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who's prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Wait a minute. The Lord prophesied about his grace coming. There's a lot of deep stuff in here. Keep on reading. Check this out. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Go ahead. Unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto, uh, unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. I told you, hey, everything that was in heaven is down here on earth. With the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. His Holy Spirit is here on earth. His Holy Spirit is in here. Listen, this is a holy convocation, right? Why? Because the Lord is among us. Not because of us. Y'all, y'all thought that, right? Oh, y'all made it holy? Yeah, only if you partake in it. If you partake in his holiness. That's why this is a holy convocation. Because he's among us. See? Go ahead. Which things the angels desire to look into? Look, the angels desire to look into this stuff, man. You think the angels know what you know? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. No. They can only go so far, the angels. Mm-hmm. 
But we flesh and blood going to take it all the way down to the Father's kingdom. And we, and listen, I'm telling you, your greatness, your greatness that the Lord has passed on to us is much more than you understand. Yes, yeah, sir. You got to consider that every day. Then you'll go back in your house and won't play in the streets and mess around. Bring your children home. See, this is big. This is big. The angels decided to look into this. What verse was that? That was the end of 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. So gird up the loins of your mind. Go be, ahead. Be sober. And be sober. I tell people all the time. They ask me, like the brother asked me the other day. Say, Abraham, you can, you can uh, uh, drink and smoke up until the Sabbath day or do whatever. Yeah, but I wouldn't advise it. Why would you bring yourself into the Sabbath day already drunk? Uh, it, it's not the Sabbath day yet. Why bring yourself into the Lord's Sabbath day and you've been drinking? Now you got to cut it off at a certain time so you be sober going into the Sabbath day. See? Yeah, you want to use technicalities with God? He's going to cut you off. You ain't smarter than him. Mm -hmm. mm -mm, don't do that. Don't do that. Do everything. You, you got six whole days to do everything you're going to do. But even at the end of the sixth day, like we end now, what we getting it together, right? So in the weekly Sabbath on the end of the sixth day, before the end of the sixth day, what you do? You get it, get it together. together. Right? You get it together. And all these things you got to constantly remind yourself of, not unless you're just used to doing it the right way. And just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Go ahead and read. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you. Yeah, that's what we wait for. Go ahead. At the revelation of Jesus Christ. At the Christ. revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's go to Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8. We're going to pick it up a little. Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8 and 10. Isaiah 8 and 10. Go ahead. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Uh -huh. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, yeah. for God is with us. Go ahead. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Uh -huh. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Yeah. And let him be your fear. Let him be your fear. Go ahead. And let him be your dread. Go ahead. And he shall be for a sanctuary, before a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Go ahead. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken uh -huh. and be snared and be taken. So this is what he told them to do. Go ahead. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. He said, bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. You're a disciple? Huh? You're a disciple, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to have both of them, the law and the testimony. Go ahead. And I will wait upon the Lord. And I will wait upon the Lord. Go ahead. That hideth his face from the house of Jacob. And I will look for him. Skip down to verse 20. Go ahead. To the law and to the testimony. He said, to the law and to the testimony. I'm showing this to that sister. That I was dealing with. You got to have both books. You got to have both sections of the book. Because remember the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi was ratified with blood. That's right. All of it. Even Jesus came in himself during the time period that Peter and Paul and him. He died in eight day ratified with blood. A new beginning. Go ahead. 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no light in it. Listen, you, you, you got to put that out there to these people. To the people. You got to. Wait a minute. If the pastors don't speak according to both sides, the whole binder. They never bought the book without all the books under this. And one under one binder. I tell people all the time, wait a minute, man. What do you mean lost books of the Bible? <laughs> what? Lost books of the Bible? How? How, is, uh, how are there lost books of the Bible? There's no more other books that can fit between Genesis and Revelation. There's no law. It's no such thing. I don't care how smart you think you, your scholastic abilities <laughs> want it to be. There's no other books. The book of Enoch, the book of Mary, the book of... There's no books. You, can't even, you don't even read all of these. 
All of these are lost to you. If you don't deal with them. Right? Man, when the last time you read? You read Philmont? Phil, Philmont? They didn't even know Philmont was in a book. Right? Habakkuk. Nahum. They don't, they don't know about Nahum. They don't. They don't know about them. They, those laws. Well, look, and when you look in a Roman Catholic church book, I got one about that big at the house. They got books in that man. It, it's crazy. It's crazy type books in them. You know. But that, this is how it is, man. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to it, it's because there's no lie. That is a, a universal sign to let you know they are not true shepherds of the Most High. That's right. That's a universal sign. Let's go into Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Look at this. Look at this. Now, this is Jesus, actually himself. Luke chapter 4. Here we go. Luke chapter 4, pick it up at verse 1, Luke 4, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, mm -hmm. being forty days tempted of the devil. Uh -huh. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward a hunger. Yeah. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command these stones that it be made bread. Okay. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. He knew who Jesus was. Say, so he knew who Jesus was. So he said, If thou be the son of God, command that this stone. He knew that Jesus could command the stones that it be made bread. He knew that. Did Jesus, because he, did he get off into his own self being God that he knew he was, start trying to prove Satan wrong and I'm going to make some bread? No. He didn't. He just told him the word. And he knew who that guy was too. He says, it's written that man shall not live by bread alone. You come to me because you think I'm hungry? What do you think I'm thirsting for or hungry for? For the word. That's what, that's what Satan missed. No. Mm -mm. So man don't live by bread alone. You don't. You don't. Quit eating so much. <laughs> Eat for strength. I'm telling you, it's going to come a time. Eat for strength. Eat for strength. Practice that sometimes. When you're hungry, let it, let, let it, let it turn the stomach a little bit. And say, man, you know what? Fast sometimes. Fast sometimes. Fast sometimes. Don't wait till the atonement all the time. Now you're up against it. But if you fast during a year, man, that's like nothing. It's nothing to us now because everybody, even the children say, man, we love the atonement. But listen, fast during a year. Right? Call on your God. You know? Why are he making atonements for you all during a year? Mm. Right? You know how many times God forgive us? Every day. Every day. Every day he Forgiven us, man. The Passover. He incorporated all that forgiveness from day to day, from day to day, from day to day. Right? Let me see where we are. Um, I think that was it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to Job 28. This is part of that song. That they were singing today. Yeah, Job. Uh, what did I say? Job twenty-eight. Job twenty-eight. Yeah, Job twenty-eight. <clears throat> mercy, 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 mm -hmm. mercy. The Lord have mercy on us, man. So here it is, Job twenty-eight. This is like the psalms they were singing today about. The king is everything, right? And men that wrote this, man, they write this. I'm going to show you why men haven't wrote this. Wait a minute. The Lord, I, the Lord just happened to be our king. He's our God, but he just happened to be our king, right? He just happened to be our high priest. He just happened to be. Wow. 
He just happened to be, right? That's impressive. Right? So, he is, he, he the first tailor ever. First tailor ever. When Adam and Eve was in the garden, and they found out that they was naked, what'd he do? Sold them coats of skin. Mm. Right? And he clothes them with it, right? The first tailor. They didn't know about that. That's why I'm telling the system, man, man ain't right this. Right? So he clothed Then he taught them before they even knew and put it on a map, mouth to mouth resuscitation. Right? He said he breathed into their nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. That's right. Right? Yep. Then he took his physician skills, right? And opened up Adam and took a rib out of her and made a man, made a woman, right? His physician skills. You have no idea who you're talking about or talking against when you throw this book out the window. Right? This man does everything. He even can bring the dead back to life. You want to see that? That's the ultimate with flesh, right? You dead, but now you're alive. You dead, now you're alive. The Lord even told him, he said, it's in my power to do that. He says, it's in my power to make alive and kill and make alive and kill and make alive. He can bring you back, bring you back, bring you back. That's why when you understand what death is, we can lay down and mm -hmm. rest. You're only going to rest. Don't even fret it. You, you're not going to be no more deader than Adam was the day he died 6,000 years, almost 5,000 years ago. Everybody that's in this room, if we all just sell out now, when we wake up, we're going to be the same moment that when Adam died. Adam thought he, when Adam wake up, he's going to think he just died. That's what you do every night. When you deep sleep and you didn't work hard and the children got on your nerve and you really, right, and you in it, you are dead to the world, right? They say it all the time, right? And if you died, you never knew it. You never know. But we understand that we're going to rest in the Lord being right. servants of the Most High God. We don't die like that. It's a difference. You know that, right? You rest in the Lord. you just resting. Because when he called and said, hey, come up, all those who have done the things that he say do, you're going to be able to hear. Mm -hmm. They won't. Because they are dead. See, there's a lot of good stuff. Job 28. So the Lord is going to put himself on a map here with Job. And Job was dealing with his friends. And they was coming against Job big time. But Job thought that he could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with God. And like I was telling his sister, hey, look, here it is. This is the power of the Most High God. We can read it all over the book, but I just picked out Job 28. And this is how it is. He's going to shoot out some knowledge. This is what God. And when he get to man, let's see what he tell man. Go ahead. 28 and 1, Job 28 and 1. Go ahead. Surely there is a vein for the silver. A vein for the silver. Who know what that is? And I know you don't. God is getting ready to explain to you how this stuff come about. See, it's a thing that runs through to make silver pure and when you when you are uh, cleaning it up. He said, there's a vein for the silver. Go ahead. And a place for gold where they find this it. This is the Lord actually talking. Go ahead. Iron is taken out of the earth. And brass is molten out of the stone. Did you know that brass was molten out of stone? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No, you didn't. No. You don't know it until the Lord tell you. Brass is molten out of the stone. Go ahead. He setteth an end to darkness and searcheth out all perfection. The stone of darkness and the shadow of death. See, you, can't, you don't know where the end of darkness is. You just be searching. And you keep going and you scared every step of the way. See? But it's an end to darkness. But only he can search that out. Go ahead. The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant. Uh -huh. Even the waters forgotten of the foot. They are dried up. They are gone away from men. As for the earth, out of it cometh bread. See, out of the earth come bread. I know you looking at it as rocks and hard concrete. But how do bread come out of the earth? Right? That's something to think about. Go ahead. And under it is turned up as it were fire. The stones of it are the place of sapphires, and it hath dust of gold. Go ahead. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. This is the Lord letting him know, hey man, there's some places on this earth that the vultures haven't seen. Hmm. See? 
Man haven't been everywhere. His foot hath not trod on everything. No, he haven't. Go ahead. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. Go ahead. He put it forth his hand upon the rock. He overturned the mountains by the roots. See, the Lord can overturn the mountains by the roots. He j I mean, like what? Like a matter of just turning it over. Like, I kick this. Go ahead. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks. Look what he said. He said he cutteth out rivers among the rocks. What's that? That's the waterfalls. All in shapes in, in, in Arizona and all over the place. The Lord cut out all in shapes. Just by water. Just by water. Go ahead. And his eye seeth every precious thing. Yeah, he do. Go ahead. He bindeth the floods from overflowing. And the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to life. Hey, you can't go past that quick. The things that are hid bringeth he forth to light. If you don't know, well, yeah, well, my, my glasses is on the top of my head and I'm looking all over the house. <laughs> Man, baby, you see my glasses? It's on your head. That's how the word is hid. But if you keep reading, if you keep reading, if you keep reading, he'll bring it to light. He'll show it to you, right? Go ahead. Verse 12. But where should wisdom be found? Here we, this is what we're talking about. Man can't write this. Where can wisdom be found? You talk, you, you, he, when God is wisdom. He made wisdom. Where can wisdom be found? This is what this is going down to, that he's trying, trying to tell Job and get Job to understand. Go ahead. And where is the place of understanding? Where is the place? Can somebody tell me? Hmm. Man didn't write this. Go ahead. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth saith, it is not in me. Wait a minute. If, the, if you go ask the depth, it can't tell you about wisdom because depth was made by wisdom. He'll be saying, hey, man, don't ask me. I was made by wisdom. Go ahead. And the sea saith, it is not with Look, me. Look, the sea was created. Don't ask me. Go ahead. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed. You can't for the get wisdom thereof. like that. Go ahead. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. This is the Lord talking. Go ahead. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, mm. and the exchange of it should not be for jewels or fine gold. You, hey man, you can't exchange this. That's why I say I can walk from here to Alaska, and I will be fed just with having this book, because it's not to be compared to nothing. It's eternal. Go ahead. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia should not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Mm. Whence then cometh wisdom? He, he asks again, so whence then cometh wisdom? Go ahead. And where is the place of understanding? Where is the place of understanding? Where is the place of understanding? Somebody tell me that. See? Because when you say you see, when you say you see, you're telling me you understand. Did you know that? To see means to understand. To see means to understand. Oh, I see. Do you? Do you really see? Because if you see, you understand. That's what seeing to the Lord means. Go ahead. Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living. Go ahead. And kept close from the fowls of the earth. Destruction and death say, We have heard the fame thereof of our ears. Yeah. Go ahead. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. Go ahead. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven, to make the weight for the wind. Wait a minute, you don't think the wind weigh nothing? Yeah, it do. You got to ask the scientist, though, the Lord. He can weigh that stuff. Go ahead. And he weigheth the waters by measure. Yeah, he do. Hey, this guy, this guy's awesome. His name is Jesus, Jehovah, that guy. Awesome. Off the chain. Go ahead. When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder, uh -huh. then did he see it and declare it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. He said when he made a decree for the rain and the way of the lightning of the thunder, because what happens first? You get the lightning and then you duck. Because if you get a real light one, then you know a big boom is coming, right? He tell you how it comes. It comes lightning, then it comes thunder, right? He say, he commanded, he said a decree for the rain. Listen, like I was dealing with the children's class, and I asked him, hey, can the sun hear? I asked you, can the moon hear? Mm -hmm. Huh? Well, why then do it come up in the east? I mean, set in the east. Why do the moon come out when it come out? 
Why do the sun come out when the sun come out? Where? In the east or in the west? Where do it come up? In the east. Where do it come up? In the east. The Lord said it. It's in the book. It yeah, it is. In the east. It rises in the east, right? And why have it not rose in no other place but the east? Because he commanded, the Lord commanded it, and it's got to do what the Lord said. Oh, he'll kick that out of the sky and get him another one. That's right. Do it have ears? Yes, it understand what to do. Yes. See? It said in the West, every night, every night, and it's not going to change. It's not going to change. It won't change. Yeah, he is going to come from the east gate. Where we at? Go ahead. 28. And unto man he said, Behold. But now he went through all of that and he finally got to man. But this is what he told man to do. Go ahead. Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So he, when he got to man, he just told you, hey man, this your job. I wouldn't even trust this in your hand to write my book. No, no. Only thing you do is fear me. Right? And depart from evil. That's what you're supposed to do. He didn't tell him nothing else. <laughs> that, and keep my commandments. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Check this out. Call, go over a few books. Look at what he told him right here. Ecclesiastes 3. It's okay to participate. You ain't nothing but a big family anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? You had older men in here, younger women, older women. They can tell us a lot of things. See? Okay. Ecclesiastes 3, pick it up at verse 10. Look what the Lord said. Go ahead. I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. Check that out. Go ahead. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Uh huh. Also he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Do you know that? He only lets you go so far. He only going to let you go so far. And when you get these big pundits and these big philosophers and whatever they call themselves, they can only go so far. Because he didn't set the earth, he didn't set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work of God, which God make it from the beginning to the end. See? Keep on, go ahead. I know that there is no good in them. Yeah, because there is no good in them. They're already trying to get to Mars. They're trying to get to Mars. You go, go what? Is that my phone? Oh. Oh, I know I heard some music. It sounds good, but. I thought that was my phone. All right, so look, he says no good in man. It's no good in man. It's none. They 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 on the verge of the Frankenstein thing, right? Right? And I sit up and I watch the Frankenstein movies every October thirty first or something. Mm -hmm. Right? I do. I do. But they doing that now. Taking the body parts and making man and doing this and doing that. It's no good in man. It's no good. See, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to tell you about no sign, all the scientists and all of that good stuff. But go ahead. But for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. That's what he's supposed to do. Go ahead. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. That's what you're supposed to do. Go ahead. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Yeah. Nothing can be put to it. See? Nor anything taken away from it. See? And God doeth it that men should fear Listen, before him. So that's why you don't add to his word or take away from his word. He said, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Mm -hmm. Nothing can be put to it. That's this book. Or nothing can be taken from it. No lost books. That get rid of that. Right? Mm -hmm. And God doeth that men should fear before him. That you can't change nothing. He say, hey, he say in the same book, he say where the tree fall, in the place where it fell, that's where it's at. You can't say, wow, man, if it just fell a little bit over here, I could make a difference. No, wherever it fell, it fell. You can't do nothing about it. 
Let's go to uh, Revelations 22. This was the title of this lesson. Revelations 22. This was the title of the lesson. It was not who wrote the Bible and who can interpret. This was the original title of this lesson. Revelations 22. Pick it up at 18. This was the title. Revelations 22. 18. To 20. But here we go. Revelations 22. Pick it up at 18. Go ahead. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this now book. Now the sister is listening to this lesson. So she, I tell her, you know, the Lord say, hey, if you hear the prophecy or the words of this book, go ahead. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Wait a minute. Don't just fly by that. See? You want to add to this book? He's going to add to you the plagues. Okay. Is there uh, uh, a consequences for taking out? Let's see. Go ahead. And if any man should take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God should take away his part out of the book of life. It's a consequence for taking out. That's why he say don't add to it or don't take out. It's a reason for that. Go ahead. And out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. That's good enough. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 8. Back to Ecclesiastes 8. We're going to move now. Ecclesiastes 8. Pick it up at verse 16. 8. 8 and 16. When you get it, go ahead. When I apply mine heart to know wisdom. Uh -huh. And to see the business that is done upon the earth. Uh -huh. For also there is that neither day nor night. See it sleep with his eyes. Uh huh. Because everything under on the earth deals with God, and God deals with the man that's on the earth. He said, "When I applied my heart to know the wisdom and to see the business that is done upon the earth." Go ahead. Then I beheld all the work of God, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. Uh huh. He can't find out everything. He want to know, but he can't find it out. Go ahead. Because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, father. Though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. Yep, that's good enough. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12. Let's see what's happening here. Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12. Pick it up. At verse 9. I like to read this whole Ecclesiastes. When you read this whole Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. this is really about the day of the Lord. A scary, quiet day. When you read this. Ecclesiastes 12. But skip down to verse 9. Go ahead. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Uh huh. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. That's the only thing we're supposed to be doing. Whether you're a man or woman, setting things in order. Hey, man, this is what the Lord say. You know, this is what the Lord. No, sisters are not ordained to be preachers. Let the man die for that. Because he's going to do something. You know why I used to tell people, man, I can't stand these things. These rostrum. Seem like everybody stand behind them, go crazy. <laughs> yeah, they do. The first thing they pick up is a handkerchief. And then they go. I can't stand these things. I like to burn them. You know, it's, it, to me, it's only a Bible stand. It only holds my Bible. You know, because everybody get behind there and go crazy. Go ahead. Verse 10. Go ahead. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright. Yeah. Even words of truth. Even the words of truth. Go ahead. The words of the wise are as golds, uh -huh. and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. Yeah. And further, by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. Of making many books. It's no end. It's no end to making many books. Go ahead. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Even when you're reading this. Even when you're reading this. You ever be reading this? And all of a sudden the spirit of sleep come on you? All the time Satan be on it. Right? I, I, you, you can have been and had 18 hours of sleep. Ate good. Not too much where you can go to sleep. Turn off the TV. And you can open this book. You ain't read it in a month or two weeks. 
and start reading it, and all of a sudden, <sighs> right? Because that's how this book is. Satan is on it. I'm telling you, Satan is on it. You know, so you got to pick it up and go outside in the cold air. <laughs> Whoa, and keep on, right? Because you will go to sleep. That's his job, to cut off everybody he can. You don't think, you don't, you think you're dealing with humans? You're not dealing with humans. Do you know that? We up against it. We're not dealing with humans. We're dealing with spirits. Spirits, spirits, spirits. That's what we're dealing with. You think your job is hard? Yeah, it is. Right. Yeah, you're dealing with spirits, man. Now you recognize how big and how strong we must be in the Lord, in the power of the Lord. Right? Because we're dealing with spirits, man. And what do we do? We go to our strength. Mm -hmm. Who's the spirit of spirits, right? So we flesh and blood, we standing here open and can be seen, right? So you have to go to a God that can deal with those type of things for us, right? You know, and we don't feel, we, you know, we get scared sometimes. We don't feel, we don't feel like that. I said, man, in the day, if I'm around, I'm going I'm to keep me a, a roll of duct tape. A roll of duct tape. So I can put it over my mouth. So I don't have to not deny the Lord. That's the only thing I don't want to do is deny the Lord. And no matter how strong or you think you are standing in the Lord, they can do it. They, they will deny the Lord. Peter did it. That's right. A lot of them did it. The Lord understood, but you don't want your mouth to deny the Lord. You don't. You don't. And I mean that. I got a butt. Whatever car I'm in, I got a roll of duct tape. <laughs> Just in case the day come down. And when I start seeing the signs coming down, I'm really. Right? I'm for real. Because I'm on a move. They're going to have to catch me and kill me. I'm not going to stand there and say that, you know, hey, I'm for the Lord. I'm for the Lord, but they got to catch me. And you know you're going to run, right? You're going to run. And if you left back here, you're really going to run. Right? I'm going right to Alaska. I'm going right back over there. Dig me a spot where ain't nobody coming. Right? And I just lay on down. In the snow. In the snow. Love that place. Right? So, that's how it is. It, we up against it. In other words, we up against it. You know? We up against it. That's why we got to be good to each other. I keep preaching that. We got to be good to each other. We do, we do. Where we at? Uh, verse 13. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Go ahead. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Yeah, it is. For God should bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay, let's go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Acts 19. And pick it up at verse 17. Let me show you something what happened here. Now, Paul and these guys went and was was preaching the gospel to these Gentiles. See? Mm -hmm. But we're going to see what happened. Acts 19 and pick it up at verse 17. 17. And Paul and them had went through a whole lot of things talking to these people. Uh, he was in uh, Ephesus at this time. And uh, it was certain that the vagabond Jews in Exodus, and they took upon him to call over Paul and them. But verse 17, go ahead. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. Uh -huh. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Because they were so used to dealing with gods, them pagan gods and gods made, when they heard about Jesus and heard that this is a God of spirits, which took it to another level. These Gentiles was on it. They was on these guys. That's why when you see a, a Gentile grab this book, man, it's hard to outdo them. I'm for real. It's just how it is sometimes. It's just how it is. Israel be sitting over there. Man, well, they believe so hard. Well, you better join in. Go ahead. 
And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Uh huh. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together. And they brought all them books. All them books. All them books they was reading all them years. Go ahead. And burned them before all men. Mm -hmm. And they burned them. So much for books. Go ahead. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. I just wanted to show you that. There's no books stack up to this book. It's none. It's none. It's none. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know about the Quran. I know about the Quran, I do. I know it. My name is Kevin Gates. But my mom them called me Abdul Hamid Rahim. Abdullah Hamid Rahim. See? I was a black Muslim. I was a child though. See? Yeah. I visited Arabia, Mecca, Medina. I traveled. I traveled. I traveled. I traveled. I traveled. It's so easy for me to deal with people. I done seen 65 countries. Twice. 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 So when I walk up to people, I just want to know who you are. Hey, who you are. You know. Right? So you go to all these places and you introduce yourself to all these people. And they introduce themselves to you. And your own common... The only common thing we have that we should be dealing with is salvation. That's right. It's salvation. And it seems like people forget that God is the creator of us all. That's right. He's the creator of us all. And I have children, especially children today, they, they more so into interracial marriages and things like that. And they ask me because they know. And I tell them. But I bring them in a way that they know. Right? Listen, God is the creator of us all. Every nation on this side of the flood, all was born in one house. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All born in one house. Imagine that. All of us born in one house? Yep. I was over there with Ray. He was with me. I was Shemite. He Japheth. Right? We got Hamite in here. Right? Just everybody born in the same house. You know. Mm-hmm. And then people be talking about other things, other things, and other things. Why? I even talked to a Ku Klux Klan guy. I love talking to them. I love talking to them. Man, y'all people be marrying our people. Man, your people be marrying our people. Right? But listen. I let them know before it's over with. Listen, the Lord separated the people. Why do anybody know why the Lord separated the people and say don't marry each other? Because you pick up their ways, he say that. But you know the natural part of it, the reason why he say don't do it. Somebody, somebody got to tell me. Because of inheritances. Inheritance, that's all it is. Inheritances. I agree with the Ku Klux Klan guy. I said, you know what, Bill? You're right. I didn't argue with you. You're right. Because that Italian is supposed to get that Italian man, and they're supposed to keep their inheritance in themselves. That's, just what, that's the only thing. It's a separate. Yeah, you got a spiritual side of it about their gods, but the main side, the natural side of the thing is that you do not pass another man's inheritance off to another nation. Now the inheritance is gone, and it's all mixed up. It's all mixed up. The Lord didn't even want Naphtali to marry with Gad or Dan. Because now the inheritance are gone. It's one of the main things written in the laws in Deuteronomy 25. It's one of the main things. Do not pass inheritance over. Now if you understand that, now you don't have to be looking at them like mad. You know? No, I agree with you, man. You're right. Because this guy over his, he deserved his inheritance. And he deserved his inheritance. You know? And when, because God's going to bring everything in order. He's going to bring everything in order. I wanted to deal with this lesson so bad. The book of Ruth. That's the lesson I was going to deal with today. All things made perfect after the due order. That's the lesson I was going to do. But I said I'll deal with this one. So maybe I get a chance to deal with that other. And I still I want to thank Daniel while I'm here. Daniel and Mark for giving me the opportunity 
to deal with this. So, where we at? That was the end of 19. 19? All right, I think that was it. So they burned everything. They burned all the books. That's how much they were impressed about the gospel when Paul and them came to him. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. And once you get this gospel, this is how you liken it unto. And it, it took Jesus to write this this way. It took the Lord. And remember, he was in the flesh when he said this. But he knew this when he was gone. Matthew 13 and 51. Matthew 13 and 51. This is how the gospel is. This is how, this is how sweet it is. Uh, Matthew 13, 51. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? Uh -huh. They say unto him, Yea, Lord. Because he was shown in parables about his kingdom. His kingdom. Go ahead. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a household, uh -huh. which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. He said, therefore, every scribe which is instructed in the kingdom, because he's one in the kingdom. This is what he said. He said, of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, like the Lord, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. That's what you do. See, why? He told you that in Isaiah 8. Mm -hmm. He said to the law and to the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. But a good household will put up that old thing. Yeah, man, yeah. Everything is modern in the whole house and he'd go up there and put something old up there. Yeah, I like it. Right? That's what a good household will do. And everything can't be new. Right? Let's go to... John, the book of John, not St. John, the book of John back there by Revelations. John 1, John 1, 1 John, thank you, 1 John. 1 John, and we, we almost do. 1 John 1. Look at this. So when I, when I have my Bible... And I always refer to it as my holy Bible, because it's holy. It is holy, man. You know. So, I don't, I don't put it down on the floor. Not unless I'm down there reading. And I'm down, all the way down on the floor reading. I try to keep it. It's just something I do. I don't put no books on top of this book. You'll never see this no book on top. Or even my study book. That, that's just me. Because I understand what's happening. And you'll understand what's happening here with this. First John 1, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. That which was from the beginning. Hey, that which was from the beginning, right? Go ahead. Which we have heard, uh -huh. which we have seen with our eyes. Your own eyes is looking at eternal life, is looking at God, is looking at this. Go ahead. Which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Hey, you got your Bible? Fill it. Just fill it. Just fill it. Right? 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 If you understand what this is, this thing is it's kind of heavy. It's heavy. Right? Your, wor your, your eyes and your hands are handling the word of life. These are not just odd words in this. See? Go ahead. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. Go ahead. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and, and was manifested unto us. And, and, and in his lesson, it, I had to show her this. On trying to show her about this, I had to show her some other things with this. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shown to you the eternal life, which was with us, the Father, and was manifested unto us. Go ahead. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. That's what we do. We pass this on. Go ahead. That ye also may fellowship with us. Mm. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. Yeah, amen. Don't you know we're fellowshipping with the Lord now? He that big. He can be all over the place. Right? He sent out his spirits all over the place. And yeah, the seed is open. It might be open for a reason. Right? It might be just standing up. The Lord of hosts is among us. I like to welcome everybody here to the House of Jacob Bible Study class. But I also like to welcome the Lord of hosts. Right? 
You got to do that. Right? Go ahead. And with his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. That's what we do this for, that your joy may be full. Go ahead. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That's the first thing he's saying. Let there be light. Let there be light. What light was that? That wasn't his type of light. That wasn't the sun. He said, let there be light. Let there be light. He was talking about himself. Because before anything got set up on this earth, the Lord had to come. So man didn't have no reason to say the light wasn't here. Let there be light. And there was light. And the light was what? Good. He saw that it was good. Right? Right? Go ahead. Verse 6. If we say that we f have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You got to remind yourself of that every day when you're out here. See, don't, don't close this book when we leave today. And close your mind. Boom. As soon as the book closed, the last, praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Boom. Now, everybody then is over. Yeah, I'm glad that's over with. Now, Harold's chicken. Right? You, I'm, I'm for real. When the book is closed, don't close it off. You got to feel this. You got to feel this. You got to live this. Jesus is with us, man. I'm telling you. He is with us. Go ahead. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood See, of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Hey, isn't that good enough? Isn't that good enough? That's, that's satisfactory. Philippians chapter 2. When you're out there doing something stupid, you got to remember about his body, what he put on the line for us. He suffered, man. You think he's not suffering now? He hated that he's sitting on the throne and he's looking down and these babies are getting abused. And these wives are getting beaten. See? He sent his angels to uh, save us sometimes. You know, but he got a, he got a clear picture on everything. Philippians chapter 2. Pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead. Philippians 2, hold on. Verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. This is what I, this is what I tell people. This is my message to you. This is my message to you. Go ahead. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Go ahead. Hey, I don't care. You get in the house with a wife. Hey, work out your own salvation. You can work together, but when the deal go down, hey, it's all individual. And if you stay together, though, in Christ, then, hey, die together. You understand? Go ahead. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yeah, it is. Do all things without murmurings and disputing. Try that. It works. It wor It works. Just think about who's standing in front of you. Don't look at it. That's, man, that flesh, I can't stand her. I wish you go in the corner and stop breathing. <laughs> right? Right? You're dealing with flesh and blood. Right? Don't deal with flesh and blood. Just deal with the spirit behind them. And say, man, you know what? I understand that. I understand that. Go ahead. That you may be blameless and harmless, the yeah. sons of God. That you, see, you want to you wanna please the Lord. You got to stop your mind. That's what I keep telling them about that duct tape, man. We all need it. Mm. Mm. Man, mm. Mm. I shouldn't have said that. Because you want to be blameless before the Lord. Hey, his eyes are all over the place. Right. His eyes are all, all over the place. He said, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Showing himself strong. On the behalf of them that what? That love, that love him. See? Show himself strong. Go ahead. Without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, yeah. among whom ye shine as lights in the world. That's what you are, lights. Go ahead. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. You can't run in vain. Listen, it, we have some brothers in here that, that is not with us no more. Not dead. They're not dead. You wouldn't even think that these brothers would leave. They didn't eat pork. They didn't do nothing. They believed in Christ. I mean, downright. 
they're not here with us. That's right. Talking about the Sabbath day rotates in different days and things are not. Everything, how is it that everything you believe you don't believe now? Mm -hmm. But the Lord had already prophesied of them. I hope that they come back, but how can you when the word is sitting there? That's right. Right? But it's almost impossible. Right? Once you have tasted of the good word of God. That's right. You know? Then you, then you, it's easy for you to turn around and say that Jesus was a lie. That's what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 17. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. That's how I feel. Go ahead. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you. That's good enough. You know what? That's good enough. That's good enough. Let's go to uh, St. John chapter 6. We got a few more scriptures. St. John chapter 6. St. John 6. St. John chapter 6. And let's pick it up at verse. Uh, that's dealing with it a little bit, but it's going to be dealing with the same thing, but we don't have time to read it all, so let's skip down to verse 52. 52. Because I love reading this whole chapter. It's, you always need to read St. John, the book of St. John. That book is off the chain. This whole book. St. John is off the chain. 52, go ahead. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? This is talking about Jesus. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Man, if I eat nothing else, I eat that. Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Hey, you got to do it. Go ahead. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood drink is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Go ahead. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Uh huh. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Did you, I, I told you that everything came down from heaven. It's here among us. This bread came down from heaven. This is some good bread. Let's uh, skip down to verse 63. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It's the spirit that makes you alive. It is. You ever been down? You ever read this word when you was down? It makes you alive. You gotta. You gotta. Come on. Go ahead. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are he life. Say they, you know why he said that? He said they are spirit. The words that he's speaking to us. They are spirit and they are like the words. We're going to see that. Go ahead. But there are some of you that believe not. Uh -huh. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not. And he know now. Go ahead. And who should betray him. Go ahead. And he said, therefore I said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Go ahead. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You got the words of eternal life. Revelations 19 and 11. That ain't even in the lesson, but I got to show you this. Revelations 19. Real quickly. I got to finish this in the next ten minutes. It won't happen. All right, cool. Right on. I already said it won't happen, but it's gonna, we only got a few scriptures. Revelations 19. The Lord know what he's talking about with this word, man. Mm -hmm. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit in their life. Revelations 19 and 11. Go ahead. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Yeah, go ahead. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Uh-huh. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word That's of God. That's good enough. And his name is called the Word of God. His name. 
Why you think he's so much on this word thing? The word, the word was in the beginning. In the beginning was the word. That's him. In him, him, he is called the word of God. Psalms 138. Psalms 138. Watch this. Look at this. Psalms 138. Look at this. Everybody fighting and, and wrestling over. His name is Jehovah. His name is Jesus. His name is this. His name is that. Right? It's cool. It's good. We're going to see what the books say. When all confusion is over with, this is what the Lord say. Psalms 138, pick it up at verse 1. Psalms 138, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Now, he, this is King David. He said, yeah, I'm going to praise you with my whole heart. Go ahead. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Go ahead. I will worship toward thy holy temple. Go ahead. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness. Go ahead. And for thy truth. And for thy truth. Go ahead. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So when you do arguing about what his name really is, we know uh, who his name is. But he said his word. Yeah. Is magnified above all his name. Above all his name. When you when you're confused about things, mm -hmm. go to the word. There you go. You go to the word. Who's the, can't nobody argue with that. Hmm. Right? And no other gods looked upon as the word. But the Lord. Alright, let's get back. Uh, Isaiah uh, 59. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. And pick it up at verse 20. Isaiah 59 and 20. Okay? Go ahead. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. And he's going to come. Go ahead. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth. The words that the Lord put in our mouth? Go ahead. Shall not depart out of thy mouth, uh -huh. nor out of the mouth of thy seed. I'm only reading this because this is instructions. These are instructions. And it shouldn't depart out of your children's mouth. Go ahead. Nor out of the mouth of thy seed. Your seed. grandchildren's mouth. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say the Lord from henceforth and forever. Let's go to Psalm 78. Psalm 78. You got to give it, this is the last part that I said I was going to cut out, but I couldn't. Because you got to pass this stuff on to your children. You know, Psalm 78, and pick it up at verse 1. 78 and 1. Go ahead. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. This is the Lord talking. Do David. But this is the Lord talking. Go ahead. I will open my mouth in a parable. That's why you can't interpret it. Because it's dark sayings. Read. I will utter dark sayings of old. That's why man can't interpret it. That's why man they haven't written this. These parables. It's dark sayings. Secrets. He had all in it. But he make known to us the things that are dark. Go ahead. Which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. Yeah. We will not hide them from their children. Showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. You got to pass this on to your children. Go ahead. And his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. That's why when I'm not here, if I'm not out of town, I'm upstairs with the children. I got to pass it on. I rather deal with the children sometimes. Right? They cool. You, you, the children put it to you. Yeah, and then sometimes they don't listen. and But they give you the questions that you need to really. Man, I ain't heard that one before. Right? And they let you know you got to keep up on it. They keep me up on it. Go ahead. For he established a testimony in Jacob. Yeah. And appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. Go ahead. That the generation to come might know them. That the generation to come might know them. If we don't pass this on, the generation won't know. We are the first generations that can say that, man, these children are starting to be brought up in the Lord. And in, in, in the in, in, in Jesus, in Christ, right? In Israel, a nation of people that's been restored back their laws and their statutes and their commandments, right? We love that. They ask me all the time, hey man, what are you? 
I'm, I'm, I'm Israelite. Man, what? No, I said with convict, man, I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. What? Uh, yeah, I'm an Israelite, man. Yeah. What are you? I'm going to tell you. I'm an Israelite. Go ahead and read. Even the children which should be born. Go ahead. Who should arise and declare them to their children. Yep, go ahead. That they may set in order, that they may set their heart and hope in God. Look, that they might set their hope in God. There's no other hope. There's no other hope. There's no other hope. Go ahead. And not forget the works of God. And not forget his works. Go but ahead. keep his commandments. Yeah. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. That's good enough. Uh, Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11. By this time, that sister, she didn't put her book down. She didn't close it up. Her feet is up on the couch, and she just listening. Now she believe and now she understand. So she only wanted to just hear. Hear. Some, uh, a, a few times she would just open up the book and, and find and make sure she knew where it went through so many books that she hadn't started knowing how to find the books. You know, her husband was just sitting there. Deuteronomy 11, pick it up at verse 16. Go ahead. Take heed to yourself. Listen, do that. You got to do that. When you leave about here, you got to do that. Go ahead. That your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside, and serve other gods, and worship them. Go ahead. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontless between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children. Speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house. Hey, when you sitting in your house, go ahead. And when thou walkest by the way. When you walking wherever you going. When thou liest down. When, when you lying down. And when thou risest up. And when you rise up, you think that's too much? I don't think so. One of the children upstairs said, why do the Lord, why do all the brothers shake each other's hand and hug each other and say, uh, praise the Lord? Every time, hey, I don't understand that. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That's all they're doing. So I told them to turn to Psalms 147. In a whole chapter. We ain't going to read it, but the whole chapter. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord for he is good. Praise ye the Lord for his excellent glory. Praise ye the Lord for his mercy. Praise ye the Lord. Because we understand what praising him means. Mm -hmm. Right? Go ahead. I lost it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's cool. 20. Thank you. Go Thank ahead. You. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates. Go ahead. That thou days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Go ahead. For he shall, if he shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them. To love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. And that's good enough. Let's go to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. Pick it up, verse 16. Isaiah 34. And 16. Isaiah 34 and 16, go ahead. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So by this time, now the little sister know that God got a book. All these books, now you can go to the book of the Lord. He got a book. And you can see that no man has written it. Go ahead. No one of these shall fail. Nothing in this book going to fail. Not one thing. Go ahead. None shall want her mate. Go ahead. For my mouth it hath commanded. And his spirit, it hath gathered them. Yeah. And he hath cast a lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. That's good. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Pick it up at verse... Pick it up at verse 8. First Timothy 4, and pick it up at verse 8. Go ahead. For bodily exercise profiteth little. Yeah, dude. The gym work, that's cool. But go ahead. But godliness is profitable unto all yeah, things. Yeah, but godliness is profitable unto all. Stay in the gym. 
with the godly prophet. Work them. Right? Right? Work it. Right? 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 Go ahead. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And the life that's going to come. That's what people be missing. The life to come. Don't lose out on that. You know how many people are going to be in there? I can see King David. I can see the Lord himself. Hmm. You're going to see him with your own eyes. Moses, you think the kingdom going to be what you think it's going to be. Don't think like that. The Lord got to set out. He's not a God that's going to give you something and you're not going to enjoy the greatness of it. Mm -hmm. He's not. I tell them children all the time. When you get in Jesus' kingdom, you might have Xbox 12,000. Right? <laughs> PS 50. Right? I'm telling you, the Lord ain't going to stop children from being children. He's not. He's not. On the Sabbath day, they're going to be playing all in the street. You know the seventh day? The Sabbath day? That whole thousand years is going to be the Sabbath day. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. The whole, every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. All, every day is the Sabbath day. Every day. That's what this day represents. That every day, because the Lord don't want that to go away. You know how hard he's working for this? His creation is incomplete. You know how he feel about that? You know how he feel about it? He's awful. It's awful that his creation is incomplete. Mm -hmm. So he got work to do. He working every day. He didn't start working day one in Adam day. He have not stopped. The last time he rested was in Genesis chapter 2. Right? Mm -hmm. He been working ever since. You sleep, he don't. You got to think about that, man. See? Where we at? Verse 9. Go ahead. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept acceptation. Uh-huh. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. Uh-huh. Who, who is the Savior of all men, especially those that believe. Yeah, go ahead. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You gotta give attendance to read. You gotta read. You gotta read. You got to read. Go ahead. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Uh huh. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them. Yeah. That thy profiting may appear to all. Yeah. Take heed unto thyself. And, and take heed to yourself. That's all you got to do. Look at yourself. Don't worry about nobody. Look at yourself. Go ahead. And unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Uh -huh. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. You, that, that, that's, that's, that's a job in itself. Yeah, it is. Right? Let's go to, um, let me see. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. And I think we got two scriptures after that. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. And pick it up at verse 158. Psalms 119 and verse 158. It don't take long to read this book. It don't take long to read it if you, if you stay on it. And when you start reading, don't put it down so long. Because you're going to be to forget everything that happened with Joseph and Moses and, you know. And you want to read. You know you're going to read it when you can get past Chronicles. If you make it past Chronicles, just keep going, right? All them names in there. All them names to pronounce. You get past Chronicles and the Kings, mm -hmm. you got it made. Right. right. You can read the four-letter words and the five-letter words, you know. You don't have to practice on your... Syllables no more after you get past Chronicles. <laughs> and repeating the words over and over again, right? right? Psalms 119. Know it. 119 and 158. Go ahead. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved. This is what David said. He beheld them and he was grieved. Go ahead. Because they kept not thy word. See, he talking to the Lord. Go ahead. Consider how I love thy precepts. Uh -huh. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving That's kindness. That's your prayer. You should be praying. Go ahead. Thy word is true from the beginning. It's true from the beginning. Go ahead. And every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Psalms 119, 97. Psalms 119, verse 97. Do you feel like this? Go ahead. 
Oh, how I love thy law. Go ahead. It is my meditation all the day. Go ahead. Though through thy commandments, though through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. Yeah. I have more understanding than all my teachers. When you deal with the commandments, believe it or not, you got more understanding than all your teachers. There's a lot of commandments in here. He ain't got a commandment, it just means just do what I say. That's what a commandment is. Go ahead. For thy testimonies are my meditation. Go ahead. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. How do you understand more than the ancients? Because this book is forever. This book been around way before man. You know, this word was around way before man. Right? So you understand more than the ancient. Go ahead. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Go ahead. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. Uh -huh. How sweet are thy words unto me. Taste, yeah, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Yeah, they are. Go ahead. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. 140, 119, and, four, and 140. Psalms 119, just read that one scripture. Go ahead. Thy word is very pure. Therefore thy servant loveth. That's good enough. Let's go to Matthew 13 again. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Pick it up at verse 44. Here's one in parables again. This is so sweet. Matthew 13. And this is Jesus with his own mouth. He ought to know. He is the God of parables and dark saints. Go ahead. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Now, this kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, even his word, right? It's hid in a field. Everybody that came to the gospel in here stumbled up on it. Not unless you children and was born in it. But everybody in here stumbled up on the feast days. Right? Everybody. Everybody stumbled up on who Jesus really is. Mm -hmm. they, they did. Everybody in here. Man, I didn't know that. Man, I didn't know that. Man, I didn't know that. I can keep going. Man, I didn't know that. <laughs> they did. They didn't. They did. Go ahead. The which when a man hath found. And you found his word or in the kingdom. Go ahead. He hideth. And for joy therefore goeth and selleth all that he hath. And buy it that And field. that thing that field where that word and that kingdom is hidden, you go sell everything you got and buy that field right there. That's what this word is to us. That's what this word is to us. Go ahead. 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like it to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. He's looking for a goodly pearl, right? Go ahead. Who, when he had found one pearl of just, great price. Just found one pearl of great price. What? This. One one pearl. That's all I need. Go ahead. Went and sold all that he had and bought it. And he bought it. 31. Verse 31. Go ahead. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Go ahead. Which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree. Yeah, it is. So that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Mm. Go ahead. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took, uh -huh. and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. See, the Lord know what he's talking about. Yeah. The woman went and took and hid in three measures of meal. Leaven, right into the bread. Go ahead. All these things... Spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, mm. that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. And we know some of them, we know some of the secrets. Um, let's, in, let's go to Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25. And pick it up at verse 11. That's why this word is, is not written by man. God can only put the words in this book the way he put them. And when he counts on you, when he exhorting you, when he telling you how hanging there, hanging there, hanging there, he know how to put them. 
where to put them, where to strike a chord in your heart. Right? So we come here and see why. Proverbs 25 and 11. Go ahead. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. You ever seen that? You ever seen that? That's what the word of God is like. His word, fitly spoken, is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Go ahead. As an earring of gold uh -huh. and an ornament of fine gold, uh -huh. so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. Go ahead. This is it. As a coal of snow in the time of harvest. This is like the word is. Like a coal of snow in the time of harvest. So is a faithful messenger to them that s send him. Yeah. It's, it's, the word is timely. Always on time. You ever notice that? It's always on time. Don't want to hear it, but it's always on time. Go ahead. For he refreshed the soul of his master. He's always going to refresh the soul of his people. Let's go to 3 John. And we got one scripture after this. 3 John. 3 John. Let me see. 3 John. Pick it up at verse 3. 3 John. It's only one chapter. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pick it up at verse 3. Look what he said right here. Go ahead. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. Uh -huh. Even as thou walkest in the truth. He said, even as thou walkest in the truth. So when the Lord come, go ahead. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So when the Lord come, he have no greater joy than to hear that his children walk in truth. This is the last scripture. Let's go to Malachi. Malachi 3. So after all of this, then I have dealt with this sister. And she, she heard all these words. And she touched. And I had to give it to her like this. Where she didn't even know what she was doing. So we sitting there and we talking, conversating back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I just read of this, Malachi 3, and pick it up at verse 16. She had no idea this was going on. But this is what you do for people when you don't know them, when you love them more than they love themselves. This is what you do. Three, Malachi 3. And pick it up at verse 16. Go ahead. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened. I said, I asked her, I said, did you know we was doing that? I said, then they that spake often, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord heard us. I said, did you know that was going on? Did you know the Lord heard us speaking one to mm -hmm. another? And did you know that the Lord even heard us the whole time we was dealing with this lesson? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. I said, did you know that I was trying to get you into the book of remembrance the whole time? Go ahead. And that thought upon his name. And we was thinking upon his name the whole time we doing this. Go ahead. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. She didn't even know that the Lord was thinking about her as, as though she was going to be a jewel. If she continue in this. But I had to give it to her like that. And sneak this up on her. That hopefully she'll take it. Go ahead. Then shall you return. And discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God. And him that serveth him not. And that's the lesson. And I hope you all got some out of that. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y